Okay, so welcome. Today's webinar, the title is How to Supplement Your Retirement. And you can see there's a sub-quote there, and that's a quote from actually um, uh, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, he says, in the end, it's not the years in your, in your life that count, it's a life in your years. Now, the reason why I'm using that, and I was thinking about a title of a book I read many years ago by Dale Carnegie. Some of you guys might have heard about it. Um, Stop Worrying, Start Living. So, yeah, the... the this is what we're talking about today. Yeah, so um, hopefully you still got a few years to go before retirement. You've got opportunity to, to plan towards it um, and things like that. But saying that, um, here's the next quote. This is a quote from uh, Richard Needham. He was a Canadian humor columnist. Uh, he says, for the first half of your life, people tell you what, to, what you should do. For the second half of your life, they tell you what you should have done. So, you know, I always say the first half is you've got a boss telling you what to do. And hopefully you're not in the second, situa a second situation where in the second half of the year of your life, you get the financial advisor telling you what you should have done. Okay. So the idea here is that uh, you want to be living with regrets. So talking about regrets, um, what is the, the current situation? Um, the current situation, I think it, um, those of you that do, when you registered, you will see my little write up or description of this particular webinar. It says, in a perfect world, it is said that the perfect retirement is where life begins because your retirement is your golden years. Um, so, you know, many investors look forward to the day where uh, they can retire and enjoy relaxation that comes with retirement. You know, that's uh, uh, well, I, think, you know, I can say there's two groups of people in this category uh, where most people, do, you know, some people do not enjoy what they're doing when they were still working. They, in other words, they do not enjoy or like their boss. And retirement is a form of escape from from their boss or from the work stress. But also, you know, people get tired of the daily commute and the traffic and things like that. So that's a one group of people that, that look forward to retirement. The other group of people is obviously people that, that – um, well, looking forward to retirement because they can afford retirement. They, they've planned for it. Um, they might be in a situation where they have what I call financial freedom and time freedom, and they have that freedom of choice. So where they can go traveling now, um, they can go play golf, and they have more time for the grandchildren. So that's the first group of people. You can enjoy your retirement. Um, so you know, people say that retirement is a, is, is a, the second stage or the next stage of your life is a new life. So that's what we're talking about here. The second group, um, if people that uh, or other investors, they that may want to stay active and keep working. In other words, they're delaying retirement. Um, uh, they can afford to, but uh, do not choose to retire. Okay. These, these are the people, especially the teachers and those kind of people that their work is their passion. Um, you know, they enjoy what they do. Uh, they might cut back on the hours. They might uh, cut away, get, get rid of the stress and things like that. But the main thing is they're doing this because um, it's their passion. They they still believe they're contributing to society. They're living on purpose. Okay, so a, a nice little group of people to have. And I know a lot of people that actually get to a stage where they, they actually become mentors to the younger generation. But they do what they enjoy um, and um, they still contribute to society. And then there's a third group. Um, and for some, it's a necessity to start, still carry on earning uh, extra income to make uh, ends meet. In other words, these are the people who are worried about retirement. They can't afford to stop working. Uh, they still need that monthly salary income. Um, might it be that they've not saved up enough for retirement. They might not. Uh, they might have started investing too late um, and haven't built up sufficient capital, or the investment growth um, has underperformed inflation. Um, but uh, you know. The, these are people that, yes, they might, I think it's the worst situation to be where you, you're not enjoying what you're doing. Um, you don't have any choice. You have to suck it up and carry on doing what you're doing, um, you know, even though you're unhappy. So the alternative is for them to cut back on their lifestyle, downgrade their lifestyle, you know, move in with the children. Um, and I think the worst case scenario, and this is, oh, I think it's a terrible situation to be where you're forced to go live on government pension or charity or ask your family and friends to support you. Okay, so that's the current situation, those three categories of people. And uh, the ideal situation as such is being a situation where um, I believe you take advantage, especially right now you've got a few years to go. Um, whoops, let me just get rid of this. Uh, sorry. So, you know, we, um, you know, yeah, you, you want to take advantage of an investment product that offers you opportunity to save for your dreams and goals. Um, 
and uh, you have access to your money at any time and um, you can have access to your full investment return without being taxed. So this is what we're going to talk about now. And um, so the ideal situation is an investment vehicle. Call it an investment vehicle that you can use for your saving plans. And I say saving plans, you have specific outcomes for different um, investment saving plans, be it emergency funds or education or retirement. And we're going to more detail just now. But also to be in a situation where you can protect your investments. And the idea here is that you want to add or complement your compulsory, and that's on the next slide, we talk about compulsory retirement products like your RAs and your pension funds and things like that. So this is a, we're going to talk about a, a, the tax-free uh, investment plan where it complements your retirement plans. So the idea is you want to be in a, hopefully in a situation where you have financial freedom because of your investment growth, you can leave legacy for your children, and as I always say in this webinar, you have peace of mind and you can sleep well at night. So what's that investment uh, vehicle? What's the options available, as I say? Uh, we talk about compulsory investments and we talk about voluntary investments. So uh, the whole idea here today, we talk about compulsory investments on the one side and left hand side here. I'll get my little cursor. Uh, these are what we call uh, pre-tax, um, uh, pre-tax money. So this is where you get involved with your um, company's pension fund, your company's provident fund. Um, so this is where you're obligated to get involved with uh, your, your company's fund. And then we also have retirement annuities. These are investments that are uh, that um, that you know you're not belonging to an employer's retirement fund, but that's still you can take advantage of some tax benefits. Yeah. Then we have things called the preservation funds, and we've had past webinars on this before, where preservation funds allow you as an investor to preserve your retirement savings that you've accumulated from your um, employer's pension or provident fund. But now when you leave your employer's pension or problem fund because of you resigned or that you've been retrenched, you take this, you take your provident and pension funds and you, and you transfer them into a, into a, pro, a preservation fund. Okay. Um, and then obviously we also got living annuities um, and limited annuities is the source of, of funds is very important. So this gives you just a flexible income options um, from your pension fund or your provident fund or your RAs or your preservation fund. Okay, yeah. so we're not going to talk about that today. We're concentrating on on on, on the tax-free investment plan that will fit in. As I say, this is what we call um, after-tax investments. So yes, we've got direct equity investments. That's local and offshore. You've got exchange-traded funds, which is the um, the platform for that. Voluntary investment plan, unit trust, endowments, and as I say, we're talking about today is the uh, tax-free option that helps you to supplement your retirement savings. Okay, so by the way, all these different financial products are available on the PSG Wealth platform. So it's one login, one platform, you have access to all these different funds. Okay, so what are we proposing today? With the tax free investment plan, whoops, let me just get rid of my little cursor here, go back to normal. With the um, tax free investment plan, first of all, it's not available for everybody, it's only for natural person, so uh, it excludes trusts and companies and obviously investment clubs and things like that. So you can open it for yourself and for your children or any other family members. That's number one. And number two, it's only available for South African citizens. Okay. So what is it all about? It's a vehicle that enables you to save and invest. And this is where the National Treasury has limited at this point in time 30,000 rand per year. In other words, 2,500 rand per month or a maximum of 500,000 in your lifetime. So you take your 500,000 divided by your 30,000, it's about 20 months, 200 months, okay, or 16.7 years. So yes, we're in November now, we've got you know, two more months, two, two, three more months to go before the financial year end, because remember this goes from tax year, from February to March. So you still got an opportunity to still uh, top up for this year, or take advantage if you haven't got the funds now, um, to take advantage now, okay. Um, so the big thing is, I think the best way to explain this is by looking at an example. If you had to compare the tax-free investment plan to a normal unit trust investment, the big advantage here is obviously the, the, uh, the tax benefits, because you do not pay any tax on the growth of your investment. Um, so you, there's no capital gains. You don't pay any tax on when you withdraw funds. You do not pay tax on dividends, income, uh, and things like that. Whereas a normal uh, unit trust, 
Um, yes, it works on the um, exclusion rate. Um, at this point in time, you'll be paying 16.4% if you're on a maximum tax rate of, 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 um, of 40%, 41%. So 40% of that, 40%, 40 down 41, 41%, that's how I get at 164 And that's the percentage you'll be paying on the capital gains. Obviously, your first 40,000 of capital grams is also excluded. But then also what I find interesting um, is you do not pay any dividend withholding tax. When the companies pay out a dividends, um, you're not being bank taxed on that. Uh, you're not being taxed the 15%. So, you know, this is where I believe the magical compounding can come in. So down the line, I believe that the big difference in saving on tax, if you compound that, is going to make a big difference. Okay, and I think that's the main benefit, and that's why I like this product so well, so much. Okay, so let's talk about the flexibility of contributions. So National Treasury has obviously, as I said, put limits on the amount you can save in these tax-free savings. Um, the contribution, remember, is made from post-tax. So you, it's your salary, whatever the case might be. Uh, that's the income you're using to invest in here. So you can you have the flexibility to start to stop contributions at any time. And um, we're talking about regular and lump sum payments in, in, in one uh, tax-free investment plan. Uh, at PSG, our minimum initial lump sum is 6,000 Rand. That's minimum. Um, obviously, uh, the minimum debit order is 500 Rand per month. That's a minimum. Minimum per month, maximum is two and a half per month. Um, but minimum per quarter, one, one, point five, one, one and a half thousand Rand per quarter, minimum, minimum half yearly is, is 3,000 Rand. That's via debit order. But you can also create a, what I call a, uh, ad hoc, or you can combine the debit orders and lump sum payments and things like that. So, you can select a automatic uh, annual premium increase as long as it doesn't go over those limits. Okay. Um, what's important, and we were talking about in other slides, is do not exceed those limits because you will be penalized. So let's talk about withdrawals. You have access to your funds as and when you want to. Uh, there's no restrictions on the withdrawals. Um, so let's for example, what's important to understand, remember you've got this lifetime or 500,000. If you had a draw of 30,000, you can't ever put that back. So if you had a withdrawal of 30,000, you only you would only have contributed 470,000 over the whole lifetime period. You can't add that back in again. If you do, obviously you'd be paying 40% on the difference. And you'll see on the next slide where I talk about that. So here's the if you got over limits. So any amount invested over these limits, you'll be taxed at 40% in that in that tax year. So, for example, remember the maximum for the year is 30,000, and you invested 35,000 in one year. That 5,000 that's, that's over over the limit will be taxed at 40%. So, in this situation, obviously, you'll be penalised by 2,000 rand. Okay. So, uh, it's important to, to to remember that. What's also un un to understand is that. There's other certain restrictions in the sense that you can't, you cannot um, partially or fully cede your investment to others. You cannot um, borrow. You can't make any, any loans against these uh, uh, tax free investment savings. Um, also important, remember this is not as a, it's a uh, voluntary investment, so it's not compulsory. So you're not protected from your creditors or from your ex spouse. Okay. Another thing is also currently. Uh, you can't transfer. No transfers allowed. So those are some of the, call it, uh, limits on, on this investment or the an investment product. What are the benefits? Um, the main thing is it allows you to save more. Okay, it allows you, allows you as an investor to save more. You can supplement for your retirement savings. You can save for your children's education. As I say, you can create that emergency fund. But also your general savings. You want to deposit for a house one day, deposit for a car, or an overseas trip, use this as a vehicle. Because remember, your growth is tax-free. Okay, so that's the one benefit. And we go one step further. As I say, you do not pay tax on that investment growth. You do not pay tax when you take the money out. Uh, there's no restrictions on, on withdrawals, and obviously, you have flexibility of, of the contributions. Um, one thing I want to just highlight for you, when we talk about what funds are available. The, and the, by the way, if you click on this little link here, uh, to take you through to our, our, our tax-free investment plan fund list, there are 59 funds on this list, and, and that's from 12 fund providers. 
Now, just understand that obviously with tax free, it's, it's, it's a product from the National Treasury. Um, there's only certain tax, uh, certain unit trusts are included. So, no structured uh, products. In other words, no um, RAs and endowments, all that kind of stuff included. So, that's number one. Number two, no direct share purchases allowed. And number three, no conversion of the existing products are allowed. You can't convert your existing VIP, your unit trust, into your tax-free plan. Um, so the whole idea about this tax-free investment plan, it's a new breed of product. And, and all the funds in this list is what they call clean class funds. So clean class is any product with performance fees not included. Okay. So... None of the funds in the tax free investment plans have any performance fees. In other words, costs are kept as low as possible. That's the main objective, number one. From PSG wealth side, um, so we have what we call clean class, but we go and step further. I call them clean, clean. Um, so there's no performance fees as per the regulator, but also we go one step further and there's also no, in our funds available, our, our list of funds, of PSG funds, is that there's no rebates. So this is a business rule that PSG uh, made. And that's the funds we have in our list. Okay. So clean funds are meant to obviously to make investing more transparent. That's our objective. Um, this was all in response to high regulatory upheaval in the financial services uh, sector. Um, so it gives you the, the main objective is to provide you a better idea of how much you are paying and what are you paying for. So just remember when it comes to unit trust investment cost, there are three parts to it. You've got the unit, a unit trust fund management fee, you've got the administration fee, and you've got the financial advisor fee. And that typically works out to 1.71% um, per annum for a fund manager, 0.57, this is including that, by the way, per annum for the administration or the platform, and 0.46 per annum for that for advice. Okay, so I'm, I'm spending some time on that just to give you some uh, context. Um, because just recently we are very excited to, um, to share with our clients that PSG Global Equity Feeder Fund, uh, which is managed by the PSG Asset Management has now been included, um, to the funds available in the tax-free investment plan. Now this fund has been, has been added to complement other funds with a global focus. And obviously there's been a lot of focus recently with the election, US election and that offshore. But the idea here is that um, our investors have been requesting more global choices. So the PSG Global Fund is a randy-nominated fund which invests solely in the PSG Global Equity Sub-Fund, which is a multi-demiciled uh, but U.S.-denominated fund. And the whole objective of this fund is to invest in the best global opportunities to be found in the world. Now, why do we? Why am I painting this? Why am I highlighting this for you? The PSG Global Equity Fund. Why is it an attractive investment? Now, the value you can see here on the left hand side, um, you know, the valuations for the global stock markets are currently broadly in line with long term averages. But PSG Asset Management, they believe they have found high quality companies, which based on various um, measures, be it the PE ratio and also the price-to-book ratio or price-NAV ratio um, offers excellent value relative to the average company in the index. So you can see uh, this is the average of the Morgan Stanley uh, uh, index, world index, 21.1 uh, on the PE, while the, the um, PSG Global Equity Sub-Fund is 13.7. Remember when it comes to PE ratios, you'll look for a low PE ratio. So that's what I mean by that. So we believe that these funds in this list or in, the, in these, these funds in this, in this portfolio offer promising long-term return prospects going forward. So you can see there, uh, the P, the price to book ratio is 2.2 and the PC uh, global equity fund is 1.4. So we, we, we had a, what is a 40% premium to, to book value. Okay. So. That's why I always say it's, it's highly. By the way, you can click on this here. You can take you, it will take you through to the the fund the, the, the uh, fund fact sheet on PSG uh, Global Equity Funds. You can read more about it. So, who is this fund suitable for? It's for investors looking for to generate long-term hard currency capital growth. Number one and number two, people that want to invest in, in the best companies in the world. 
Okay. So it's you want to invest in funds um, that are exposed to global equities. Remember, if you're invested in really in other funds and you want to switch, there's no switching fees, and obviously you also won't be triggering any capital gains. So consider this uh, a fund in your portfolio. The next three slides, I'm going to do a bit of a comparison just to show you performance, the fees, and the risk regarding the PSG Global Equity Fund. And I've had a lot of people ask me regarding this kind of approach uh, where we discuss the funds in more detail. But um, if you look at performance, by the way, again, um, I, I found this by funds A to Z, and then you do a comparison. So I just comp I took Alan Gray, I took uh, Coronation, and I took Investec, and obviously the PSG Global Funds. PSG uh, Global Equity Fund, we're the, 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 call it the youngest. We've been around since 2013. But, um, you know, the last six months, I believe our performance is doing very, very well. You can see there, the last six months, um, we're positive. Uh, compared to all the other funds, we've been doing very well. Uh, last six months to three months to last month to the last week. So something's been happening in, in that sector. That's, again, what I'm highlighting it for you. Um, if you look at the fees, and this is difficult to compare because obviously the fee type is different. So you want to look at the bottom line, the total fund expense. Now, PSG, we are the lowest. If you had to compare these four different funds, okay, 1.76 uh, total expense ratio there. Okay. So again, if you want to switch, you're not going to trigger any uh, switching fees, and obviously um, uh, there's no capital gains. By the way, also, the fund fees, the platform fees, we're the lowest. And you'll see a slide just now where I talk about that, especially if you're looking at PSG funds. And then lastly, risk measures. I want to spend some time on this. Um, you know, we talk about standard deviation. Um, standard deviation, and I'm going to give you a very broad overview, is the quantity expressing how much the members of a group, so this is a group of, of funds, differ from the mean value of the group. So we're looking at the, the uh, applying the what you call the annual rate of return of investment to measure the, the investment or the fund's historical volatility. Now, if you look at all of them, PG has the highest standard deviation. So uh, if you look at this way, the, the, the fund with the highest standard deviation um, shows you the highest volatility where obviously a, a more stable fund will have lower funds. But the, it's also highlighting you that there's a large dispersion within, which would indicate how much the return of the fund is deviating from the expected normal. So yes, there's a lot of, uh, I don't know you can call it uh, outperformance, only time will tell. But that's, uh, we, at this point in time, compared to the four funds, uh, the Global Equity Fund, the feeder fund has the highest standard deviation. Yeah. We talk about the max drawdown. This is the maximum loss from a peak to a trough of the portfolio and before a new peak is attained again. And yeah, we're looking at the second lowest. Okay. Um, that's the lowest there. Uh, PSG, uh, we have the second lowest in the scenario. Yeah. But what it is, it's an indicator of downside risk um, over a period of time. So as I say, PSG has the lowest there. So yes, we might have a great volatility. But our, our, our downside risk is, 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 as I say, in this scenario, the second lowest. Then we have the sharp ratio. Now, the sharp ratio is one of the most referenced risk-return measures. We're always talking about risk-reward, risk-return measures. And it's basically, you can call it the industry standard for such calculations. But, but uh, what are we looking at here? Again, we're looking at calculating the risk-adjusted return. The average return earned in excess of the risk-free rate per unit of volatility or risk. Let's see uh, the description of it. But bottom line, you want to be compensated. The more risk you're taking, the more reward you want to be looking at. So ideally, when you're looking at the sharp ratio, the higher the sharp ratio, the better. Now, in this scenario, PSG has the lowest. Remember, you want the highest. So, um, yeah, that's the way to look at it. We've got the lowest there. But the Sortino ratio, remember, we look at the Sharp ratio, by the way, um, looks at both the upside and downside risk, where the Sortino ratio looks just at the downside risk. And this, one, I believe, is what's also important. Sortino ratio and PSG, uh, the, the equity feeder fund, has the lowest. Okay. So, yes, we might have high volatility. 
but the downside risk is the lowest. Okay, so that's the way to interpret it. Okay, by the way, all these different uh, descriptions, I uh, googled them so you can look them up, and there's a lot of wealth of information out there. Okay, as I say, when it comes to the platform fee or the administration fee, if you're looking at PSG funds, our ongoing fee is 0.2 percent per annum, with that 0.228 percent. Okay, so that's for PSG funds, it's a, it's very, very low. Um, if you're looking at other funds, your first one and a half million, you'll be paying 0.5% plus VAT 0.5, percent and then it works on a sliding scale. Anything above one and a half million, then it slides down to 0.2%. Remember, you're not paying any exit fees and you're not paying any switching fees. So that's just when it comes to the cost. So PG Asset Management has reduced the cost of it on the tax reinvestment plan. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, let me see what kind of questions you've got. Um, Oops, sorry, let me go back and see what kind of questions you have. Cool. Wow. Robert, long question, yeah. Cool. Okay. So, Robert, you got a long question. Keith, pleasure. Okay. Uh, Robert, you're talking about tax here. I think I'll have to, you've got a long question here. Whoa. Okay, Robert, you're adding more to the questions here. Okay, good question here from Francois. Robert, I'll get back to you by email, okay? you got you got two different questions here, but very long. Okay, what happens if you switch from one institution to another? That's a very good question. Um, you can have various tax reinvestment plans at all the different institutions. Uh, just need to cap, need to uh, uh, keep track of the different funds. You know, don't exceed that amount. That's what you want, want to know. Okay. Um, if you want to, if you want to switch from one institution to another to transfer, will there be no fees or tax applicable? Now, there's no tax ap applicable, um, and there's no fees applicable. I'm not 100 percent sure about about transferring the funds, but I presume there won't be any. Okay, I'm not 100% sure on that question, Francois. So I'll have to get back to you. Robert, yeah, as I say, I'll get back to you by email on your question. Um, if you've gone over those limits, the tax and things like that. Okay, I think that's all the questions, guys. Looks like it. Cool. Okay. Try and get, uh, yeah, keep the question short and sweet. Get the point. Okay, thanks. Pleasure, Francois. Okay, cool. Let me just wrap this up. I'll see if we've reached our time limit. Um, so what I want you to get from this uh, presentation today is that tax reinvestment plan only for natural persons, only South Africans. Remember those limits: uh, two and a half thousand per month, thirty thousand per annum. Don't go over those limits; you will be penalised. Okay, so you, if you've got different funds at different places, keep track of that. Remember, you've got a five hundred at this point in time, five hundred thousand lifetime. You've, if you've got flexible contributions, you can switch off and, and switch on as you want to. Uh, which, are, which is nice, gives you that flexibility. Remember, the main objective or the main benefit of this product, you pay no tax on growth, dividends, and interest. And you have a wide range of funds to choose from. And um, I think that the main thing I want you to, the main takeaway, you can supplement your income and with this product. Yes, it's not protected and things like that, but it's a great little product. We can access your funds without having to worry about paying tax. That's a simple product. I like it. It's a simple product to understand, um, and it still has many benefits, especially on 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 tax. Number one and number two, if you're picking a, a property, you have a lot of uh, uh, potential for investment growth. So, guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. What's your next steps? Um, is to go register and open up a tax-free investment plan with with PSG Wealth today. So, so the, the the PDF and the recording will be sent out to you guys. Um, next week, we're discussing retirement savings that are tax efficient. The week after that, we're talking about uh, market volatility, so as more derivatives. The first one in December, or the second last one of December, uh, will be the beginner's guide to trading. So uh, we're talking technical analysis. And then this is a fun part, the last one of the year. How did your share portfolio perform this year? Okay, our market is, I saw we had our meeting last uh, this morning. We spoke about the market being down 1% for the year. So how did your performance, how did your share performance?
perform the portfolio perform relative to that but guys from my side thank you very much for being on this webinar uh, there's my contact details robert i'll be getting back to you by email on your question uh, until next week bye for now all the best